ChatGPT or Grammarly? Which one is right for you? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the Become a Writer Today channel. In this video, I'm going to compare the new AI tool everybody's talking about, ChatGPT, to a grammar checker that chances are you've used or heard about, Grammarly. I'll explain how they're similar, what they're different, and what I'm currently using them for. Hope you enjoy this comparison. If you do, hit thumbs up. And if you want to get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So Grammarly is free to try. You can install it on your computer or your devices and access the basic grammar, spell checker, punctuation checker, tone detector, and so on. When you're ready, you can pay $30 per month. Sometimes there is a promotion. And for that, you'll get access to the premium version of Grammarly. It'll give you full sentence rewrites, word choice, a tool for citations, and a plagiarism checker. Now, OpenAI is also free to use. However, at the time of recording this video, there is much talk in the Discord community for OpenAI that they're going to bring out some sort of pricing at some point. That may be $42 per month, but it has not been determined yet. So it's unclear how much you will pay to use a tool like this. You're also not going to be able to pay to get access to tools that the premium version of Grammarly has, such as the Citation Manager and Plagiarism Check. Next up is Availability. So Grammarly is famous for its ubiquitous plugin, which works across all modern web browsers. You can also download a desktop app to use on Mac or Windows, and you can download a keyboard for your tablet and smartphone devices. You can also use a web app, which I'm going to focus on for this video. Now, OpenAI is much newer than Grammarly, so there's no mobile apps or plugins that you can use. But basically, the only way you can use OpenAI right now is via your web browser. Both tools, suffice to say, will need you to have access to the internet to work properly. So for the purposes of this comparison, I've taken a article that I was going to send to subscribers of my email list. Now, the article has a good few typos and mistakes in it. So when I paste it into Grammarly, it automatically and quickly provides things that I can fix. It highlights the grammar errors in red and the clarity issues in blue. There are also some other reports related to engagement and delivery, which I won't go into as much in this video, but I do have a Grammarly tutorial where you can learn more about these reports. Now, suffice to say, I can fix any of these grammar errors at a click. So I spend a lot of time. I simply click on this box here and change it to lot with a contents website. So if I click on this, Grammarly will explain that I'm using the incorrect form of contents and I should change it to singular. If I'm unsure what this means, I simply click and learn more and Grammarly provides me with some helpful suggestions that I can use for changing this word. And of course, I can accept this at a click. Here's another one that normally trips up writers. That is an incorrect use of the apostrophe. So in this case, it's should be changed to it is or it apostrophe est. And Grammarly has some additional context behind this particular error that will help me learn more about this grammatical rule. Using ChatGPT as a grammar checker is altogether different to Grammarly. So you're actually gonna to have to take your article or sections of your article, which is what I recommend, and paste it into ChatGPT and ask it to scan it with specific commands. I've pasted in the article into ChatGPT and I've used this specific prompt. Please check this article for grammar mistakes. The article was about 800 words long and it took ChatGPT about 90 to 120 seconds to generate a fixed version. So that is a little bit slower than Grammarly, but obviously, you know, I'm getting this for free. So now let's compare what ChatGPT has suggested versus the original article, which had typos. So on the left hand side of the screen, we have ChatGPT's output. And on the right hand side, we have the unedited version in the Grammarly app with the typos flagged. The problem isn't finding a good X idea. The problem isn't finding a good idea. So it's fixed this one for me. It's picking, so the missing apostrophe. It's added the missing apostrophe. Now the downside is, this is not gonna really help me improve my English writing skills because I'm not actually picking up on these errors myself. ChatGPT is fixing them for me. Now whether you care about that or not depends on what type of writer you are. With a content website, for examples, with a content website, for example. So, so far, so good. These days I use keywords and the analytics. These days I use keyword and analytics tools. Excellent, so it's fixed this one as well. I earned my first hundred dollars. I earned my first hundred dollars. So again, these suggestions are all good. I'm still nerdy about finding new software tools and courses. I'm still nerdy about finding new software tools and courses and it's added the missing comma. 
So I've been quite impressed by some of the fixes that ChatGPT has come with, up with so far. It's even removed some extraneous characters I snuck into my draft, such as DFAS, so it's taken this one away as well. And then if I scroll down further, it's also fixed some of the other issues. However, when I read the article a bit more closely, I also find that or found that it had made some subtle changes which arguably changed the tone of my work. So let me show you an example. I wrote this particular sentence, Charlie Munger probably cares little for NFTs or washed out copywriters. So washed out is, I suppose, colourful or informal language to describe somebody who's burnt out. Now, if this was a friendly newsletter that I wanted to send to somebody, you know, it could be quite good because it could match the tone of the newsletter in question. But when I search for this inside of ChatGPT, you can see that this section is actually not present. In fact, ChatGPT has actually stopped responding or stopped generating a response. So that would lead me to type, did you stop? So again, it's going to be a bit more time consuming to get a finished version from ChatGPT that I can use. In fact, when I gave it the prompt, did you stop, which normally works, ChatGPT insisted that it's here. Let me know if you have questions or need help with anything. But clearly the article is not finished. So that brings me to the other issue with using ChatGPT to grammar check your articles. The tool is still early and is still in beta. As great as it is, you're probably going to have better mileage by checking individual sentences or paragraphs rather than longer articles for this reason. It's just too slow and time consuming to check an entire article this way. Let's interrogate ChatGPT a little bit more. So I pasted in a sentence that it fixed. And then I asked, why did you make this change, ChatGPT? And then ChatGPT helpfully told me, I made this change because the original text had a typo in good X, yeah, fair to say, and incorrect spelling in means of expression. The corrected text is grammatically correct and easier to understand. Let's try another one. I asked ChatGPT what's wrong with this sentence. I earned my first hundred dollars online accidentally by writing a review of lynda.com, now LinkedIn Learning. So I mean that should be earned. So ChatGPT has helpfully told me it's incorrect. I guess we know that. And the correct version should be I earned my first hundred dollars online accidentally by writing a review of lynda.com. And then it's given me some context which is kind of similar to what Grammarly does. So I guess if I really wanted to, I could use this to help me improve my English grammar skills. Next up, I took an article that I wrote some time ago. It's a review of masterclass.com. Now I have a review of masterclass on the YouTube channel as well. So go and check that out if you want to learn more about it. Anyway, I can check this article for plagiarism using Grammarly, the premium version. So I have to pay $30 per month. And I will check this article against any instances of where it may be published online. Now it's quite a long article, so this is, I think, 3,000 words long, so it can take a minute or two to scan in Grammarly. I pasted the same article into ChatGPT and I said, can you check this article for plagiarism? And ChatGPT came up with this response. The message you submitted was too long. Please reload the conversation or submit something shorter. So I did. I took a section from the article and I said, ChatGPT, can you check this article for plagiarism? And I just pasted in the very first few sentences. And ChatGPT explained it's an AI language model and cannot check for plagiarism. And then it gave me a little bit of a summary of what the article is about. So as you can see, Grammarly and ChatGPT do different things in different ways. For context, here is the Grammarly plagiarism report. And I can click on these links one by one to see if the, my article has been plagiarized elsewhere online. What about metrics related to my articles? Well, I asked ChatGPT, what is the readability score of this article? And it said because it's an AI language model, it cannot check for readability. Okay, fair enough. Can you tell me the word count? So ChatGPT gave me this response. The word count is approximately 548 words. So let's check this against Grammarly and we can see that the word count is actually 748. So this brings me to another, I suppose, issue with ChatGPT. You need to be a lot more specific uh, with your prompts that you're gonna give it. So in this case, take the entire article that's been edited and put it below just so ChatGPT knows exactly what I mean. Can you tell me the word count of the below article? Paste it in and now hopefully we'll get a word count that's more accurate. And in this case, ChatGPT is telling me it's 391 words. Clearly it's not. So let's open up a new window and retry. Taking the article, pasted it into a new ChatGPT box and it's insisted the word count is 599 characters. Grammarly says it's 748. And according to the uh, word count checker in Google Docs, it's approximately 750 words. So ChatGPT or ChatGPT is off by 
a little bit. One of my favorite features in Grammarly is the ability to accept multiple suggestions at once. Now, while it doesn't make sense to accept every suggestion, usually if you're editing something quickly and there are a few issues which are related, you'll get a box like this and you can accept multiple suggestions by clicking on accept all. Or if they're not relevant, you can just click on the relevant item and decide whether you want to dismiss or ignore it. ChatGPT is not going to provide you with a tool for accepting multiple suggestions unless you're just going to take what it produces verbatim. Another Grammarly feature that I like is the ability to apply full sentence rewrites at a click. And this is where ChatGPT and Grammarly have quite a bit in common. So both use AI in different ways to give you sentences that you can use which are more readable and engaging. So here is a clunky sentence with a content website for examples, so typo, fruition in terms of traffic or revenue can take a year or longer. That's a bit awkward to read. So Grammarly suggests, for example, fruition in terms of traffic or revenue with a content website can take a year or longer. And I can accept this at a click. Using the prompt, can you rewrite this sentence? ChatGPT suggested, achieving success in terms of traffic or revenue on a content website, comma, for example, can take one year or more. That's quite good, so I could use this as well. You can also change the tone of your writing with ChatGPT, so write this in a more friendly style. And it took a few minutes to generate this. Sometimes there is a bit of a lag or delay with ChatGPT, but it's given me some encouraging words like, don't worry, patience and persistence, and you'll get there. You can also play around and have some fun. Write this like a Japanese haiku. Content website thrives, traffic and revenue come slow, patience, then success. So clearly ChatGPT is different to Grammarly, but they do, they, both tools do use AI to help you uh, with your writing and with your style. Grammarly is a fantastic tool. I use it every day to check my writing and to check the writing of other freelancers that I work with. It helps me with plagiarism checks, rewriting and more. And I have extensive videos on the channel about how I use it. ChatGPT is currently free, but I plan to take out a paid subscription when that's offered. That's because I want a version of ChatGPT that I can use without having to worry about it going offline. But I can imagine I'll use ChatGPT in different ways to Grammarly. In other words, it's not a case of using one tool or the other. They serve different purposes. So I hope you enjoyed this comparison. If you do, hit thumbs up. And if you want to get more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.